What's going on, YouTube? Culture Dog Sam Hatchback with another Laserdisc Spotlight review. I've been tearing through a lot of Laserdiscs lately, uh, mostly to put my Sony uh, new player through its paces. Well, not really new, but new as in mid-90s. And uh, one of the discs I fired up was one I picked up in uh, Boston. I showed this on my uh, A through Z collection, but uh, Franco Zeffirelli's Romeo and Juliet, a widescreen edition. I think it's just 1.85 to 1, though I think it may have been matted and more like 1.75 1 to 1 or something like that. Uh, according to widescreen review, but it does have uh, digital sound. Um, it's got three sides, two discs, uh, all in CLV. So, uh, but it's a pretty long movie, 138 minutes. Came out in 1968, much like Bullet, which we talked about recently. And um, it's a cool flick. You know, Franco Zeffirelli's take on it. It's very classic, and he uses a lot of classic uh, Italian architecture um, as the setting that these characters romp around in, and. Um, the text of the play is given a little bit more room to breathe in this than, say, uh, Bos Lerman's Romeo and Juliet, which I also love, which I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but it's a really cool story. One, it does effectively tap into the kind of nonsensical um, urges of being a young teenager prone to falling in love at you know the drop of a hat. And uh, I always loved in this this film that like the friar that they go to visit, in this case Milo O'Shea portrays him, uh, Pete Postlethwaite uh, portrayed him in the... Uh, the Lerman version, but I love how he's pretty much the um, the stand-in for the audience. Like, if you're rolling your eyeballs and uh, groaning over, like, oh, come on. Like, really? This is the same dude that was, you know, just saying how he's going to die because he lost his Rosaline and, and all this stuff. And now he's in love with this other girl and all this stuff. The, the Friar is our voice, our mouthpiece for those uh, kind of sentiments. And it's great because it's so self-aware. Shakespeare stuff is great like that. It's, you know, layered enough that... Uh, if there's some absurdity in the story being told, there will be a character that will comment on it, which is very cool. If you haven't seen it, it's this uh, tragic romance set amidst a political scene uh, with warring clans, kind of like the Hatfields and the McCoys, in this case the Montagues and the Capulets, and uh, how everyone within their charge you know, hates people from the other clan, and... Uh, Romeo is in as a Montague and Juliet is a Capulet, and they accidentally fall in love when Romeo and his friends um, stealthily crash a Capulet party, and you know quickly they fall in love. They decide to get married, and but it's cool. It's got a lot of kind of political undertones. Uh, the friar, who again knows that this is a dumb idea, and these guys are probably going to get over each other pretty quickly. Um, is smart enough to recognize the political ramifications of coupling these two and how it could possibly put an end to, uh, you know, I don't know, decades-long strife. And um, it's cool. Leonard Whiting and uh, Olivia Hussey are really great as the uh, titular characters, and uh, it's one of the rare occasions when actual, you know, young-ish people were playing <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Um there's a lot of uh, great uh, costume design, and even on this laser disc, you know, I was impressed with a lot of the um, the detail. And this was a 1996 uh, Pioneer release, and uh, despite the fact that it's got a blurry cover, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, pretty pretty darn detailed. I, I noticed in widescreen review it had like maybe like a low picture rating, maybe a three out of five or something like that. Um, I was actually really impressed with the amount of detail in in like the stone architecture uh, surrounding these characters and the uh, the embroidery and their costumery. Um, Juliet's nurse has one scene where uh, like a kind of like multiple toned uh, garb, and you can clearly see the the kind of color differentiations. A lot of the kind of stone background work would be easy to like smear and look ugly on laserdisc, but a lot of it just uh, was very solid. Uh, I fired it up on CRT and then also on my projector. It looked great on my projector. I was really actually impressed with, uh, with it. Of course, close-ups look a lot more defined than than uh, you know long shots. But uh, even the the long shots are were pretty good looking. Um, you know, there was a few moments when I could be fooled into thinking it was DVD. Uh, Sound-wise, it was a mono release. Uh, it got great uh, Nino Rota score and uh, dialogue's always intelligible and. Uh, I think the flesh tones look great. I thought, uh, you know, color balance was very good throughout. Uh, it does have a, you know, a small amount of chapters, not a, not a ton of chapters, but uh, decent to get you through. Um, if I had to complain about anything, and it's kind of a stupid complaint, it would be that a lot of the, the locales that they chose to to shoot this in are are very, um, are very apropos because they're you know 
they've been around for for centuries but they've been weathered and 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 kind of worn over the years so they don't look as new as they should be to these characters uh, it'd be like if you know you were doing a, a domestic scene in an apartment but it's an apartment that had laid abandoned for like you know three centuries or something like that and you know the, the walls were all decrepit and falling down so it would seem kind of like absurd for you to doing this like modern conversational piece amidst this you know kind of decrepit you know, setting so it's not as bad as I make it out to be, but it's a it's a little weird. You know, you're like, oh, cool, that the verisimilitude is off the chart because they're actually in these ancient Italian locations. But then you're thinking, well, would they look that way at this time in the 1600s or whenever? Um, so, but that's just kind of nitpicking. I love Franco Zeffirelli's work. I also liked his uh, Hamlet that Mel Gibson was in, uh, despite the fact that they left out the turning point of the play. But that's uh, notwithstanding. And again, if you don't want to see uh, it, uh, the the play done in. Uh, in the kind of modern trappings like Boz Lerman's version. Uh, this is this is going to be your bag, a lot of kind of classical um, you know, costumery, etc. And uh, yeah, it's great looking. A lot of the uh, colors, uh, you know, muted, though they may be at sometimes, do have moments where they pop. And uh, there were some great, um, you know, sky skyline scenes and everything like that in certain parts with, uh, with the kind of gradations of color during, during dusk, etc., um, so yeah, I hardly recommend it. I've seen it a lot of times. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, fired it up, and I uh, figured after buying it in Boston years ago, I might as well finally get it up and running and check it out. So uh, yeah, good, uh, good late-ish or mid to late-ish release, you know, 1996. And uh, if you're a fan of the film, yeah, obviously it's available freely on DVD, and I'm guessing Blu-ray. I'll have to look into that, but uh, definitely couldn't go uh, wrong with the laserdisc for sure. All right, well, I'll be back with some more reviews, and uh, we'll talk. Cheers.